bring the plays back to the small caps. And I, I keep telling you guys, man, be careful. Guys, got to be careful what you wish for. I like boring markets. Boring markets means I'm making money every day. Boring, boring. I'm not fucking getting killed on MIRN, things like that, guys. As I'm getting older, I don't need excitement in my fucking life in terms of work anymore. I want to collect my paycheck every day, not be stressed out, not have to worry about zombie reclaims. You know, when I see a stock like MIRN, I knew I know people are going to start blowing up because it's not the MIRN stock that people blow up on. It may be, but it's on other stocks too. Other stocks just start going for no reason. And if you're early on any of the other stocks, you will die. This is why I do not, as a trader, as a guy that wants to do this for a living, as a guy that may depend on money from the trading markets, right? If you are depending money on the trading markets, why are you happy that there are these crazy ass plays? Unless you are long. But if you're long, you can get fucking rug pulled from under you as well. I like a predictable market. I like a market that I wake up every day knowing that I'm not going to blow my entire bankroll if I go take a piss. These markets are not that kind of market. These markets are, if you go to take a piss, you better put a hard stop. Not only have to put a hard stop, fucking got to carry your entire computer with you. Because <laughs> if your piss is longer than 30 seconds, you know, it, the stock may teleport over your hard stop. That's the crazy thing. Okay, we have stocks teleporting, just like MRN today, guys. And I'm telling you, man, I knew this shit was coming. I don't know what for, but I know that when a stock goes crazy like M-I-R-N the night before, we're going to get fucking slaughtered. And you know when uh, Alex actually did a very good job in stopping out, in my opinion, uh, what price do you stop out, Alex? Because it hit fucking 13 bucks, man. So don't beat yourself. Because seriously, man, you have... Not only you have to carry your computer, fuck, I gotta install a toilet seat next to my fucking trading system, man. I can't fucking leave or fucking wear diapers and shit, right? What'd you stop out on, Alex? See, I'm telling you, man, you stop out 11 bucks, that's still better than now. The fact that you stop out instead of adding to a loss is, is good. Okay? So let's re. Okay, I'm gonna start now. I don't wanna waste any more time, guys. See, look at this, man. You stopped out at $10. You lost twenty thousand dollars stopping out at ten bucks. You know, what I mean, fuck. It's now at thirteen dollars. If you did not have proper risk management, you would have blown up. You would have added instead of stopping out. So I really don't know how the fuck I stopped out, but I had the fucking most incredible stop out at nine dollars and fifty cents. I'll tell you my mindset, guys. So let's start with that. So last night, MIRN ran up to 13 fucking dollars or some crazy shit, 11 bucks, I forgot what it was, 11, 12 bucks last night, and then it tanked all the way back down to nine dollars. And then everyone's like, oh yeah, this stock is broken, which included me. Take a look at my chart that I posted on Twitter. I was actually up nice. I fucking scaled the shit out of that, I had full size, and I covered pretty fucking low. So after I covered low, it went lower, right? And then I'm like, shit, the most of my size is over. And now I covered out, I have no position. So I'm looking at the stock, the stock is broken. Not only is the stock broken, MRN is broken, there are other plays out there that became the hot chick of the day. So I'm thinking MRN is over. People lost focus on MIRN. And so I started to hoping, wishing MRN would go back up so I can fool max size out again and take a look at where I fucking started shorting you know normally if on the normal play this would have worked but MRN is not normal we know that MRN sparked a new group of crazy sympathies out there so what does that mean guys that means like dude we all know this Alex even said MRN is an avoid it's not going to be easy I'm going to be focusing on other stocks today but you know what, man? The stock fucking lured us because what it did was it let us make money in the morning. We have the false confidence that we own this stock. We know what the fuck we're doing. 
The moment you start to let down your guard is the fucking time that they will rip you a new asshole. You know? And so I'm going to tell you something. You know what, man? I will take this trade 9 out of 10 times. And it will work 8 out of 10 times. Okay? But today didn't work. But this is what you need to do, okay? So, how did I fucking miraculously stop out? I stopped out like $9.50, okay? I had 10,000 shares, guys. I had 10,000 shares short. Okay, we thought it was broken. Normally, Alex would put a hard stop. None of us put a hard stop because it was fucking broken stock. And we're like, yeah, we're making money. We're going to fucking kill this shit. Silently riding this shit down. Next thing you know, fucking chat room pumper comes in, rips the fuck out of it, and now everyone's fucking stuck. Chat room pumper has 4,000 fucking views on... <laughs> on YouTube, whatever the hell it is. I really don't think it's the chat room. The chat room guy just kind of added to that. I think the algos are ready to rip it as well. I don't give it all, all of this credit to the chat room guy. But the chat room guy certainly fucking helped it. Certainly helped to rip the new one. So, it was. It went from like, dude, $8.50 to nine fifty. It ripped up like a dollar or some crazy shit like that. And when that thing happens like that, guys. When it, when it happens like that. You have fucking, you have a couple of choices, okay? The very first reaction a new trader usually does is this. Add, 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 add. I'm going to add. How the fuck you go down? And so what's going to happen is it spikes up again and he adds again. He basically adds until he goes broke. That is a new trader mentality. Because you know what? They're like, how the fuck? This is what happens in your mind. How the hell can I be up $5,000? All of a sudden, in 10 seconds, I am freaking down $1,000. And so what happens is, oh, I'm still only down $1,000. And I'm making this scenario, right? I'm only down $1,000. I ate my max daily losses, like five, ten thousand. 10000 I'm cool. So you add more. Next thing you know, boom, it rips up again. Now you're down $5,000. And you're like, shoot, uh, my max loss is 10000 I made money last week. I made money yesterday. I am going to use the cushion game because you know what, man? How much more can it go down? Go up, that is, right? So you start adding until basically you blow up. And then, but this is the experienced trader, guys. Okay, the experienced trader knows that, hey, he's he lost. What do you do? Okay, there's a couple types of experienced traders, guys. Okay, there's ones that have been around a long time that knows that hey he can fucking make the money back so just eat the loss that's what i did i just fucking my instinct was i fucked up i'm gonna eat the fucking loss i'm not gonna add to the winner i'm gonna now they're gonna add to the loser i am not going to wait so i'm gonna give you a secret on how i take a stop loss okay if i do not have a hard stop i always always take the fucking first dip down I don't give a fuck if it goes down more because what happens is this. When it spikes up like MIRN did, I'm like, dude, there's two scenarios I could be my playbook. I could take a manageable loss, manageable loss, and I will make that back easily. But if I'm wrong and I hold this motherfucker, I could blow up. I always choose to take the manageable loss. And I'm going to tell you something. Maybe five out of ten times, it goes right back down. Maybe even seven out of ten times it goes right back down. But if it does go right back down and I covered, I can always get back in. The problem is that one time that I don't fucking cover risks me a new asshole, halts, goes up, and now I'm fucked. I just basically turn a small loss into a max daily loss, and some people don't even have a max daily loss. You would blow up your entire account. So, your first instincts, guys, should always get the fuck out. I looked at my fucking PL. I'm like, hey, I'm fucking cool. All I did was lose back my, my profits. I fucking got the fuck out. 10,000 shares I covered, guys. I was placing thousands, 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 thousands all over the fucking place, okay? I got 10,000 fucking shares. I took, I ate the monster loss. But to me, that's not that really monster loss. Because you know what, man? I can make back 5,000 anytime. But I had a $4,000 cushion on that stock, so I was good. So I was actually just read a little bit in that stock. So what happens? Take a look at the chart. 950 I covered. Some people waited, some people added. Next you know, it shot up another buck. And that's 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 basically game over. 
okay? But then the, the, the Spirits guys will, will take that loss at the next line up. Next line up. They will take that loss, okay? That still keeps them in the game. That is, that is good. In my opinion, if you fuck up, take that fucking one more time, get the fuck out. The amateurs are the ones that keep adding, adding. How much can it go up? That's when it goes from 950. It's, so it went from 850, teleported up. The moment it teleports, guys, I'm out, man. I know something's fucking sinister. This is not a normal play. MRN killed people yesterday. And I'm looking at the, so I'm looking at the range of MRN. I'm like, dude, it can fucking go right back to the high of days. And it did. So what I did was very simple, guys. I did, um, I am a very conservative guy. I'd rather live to fight next day. If I got one punch into the bully, and the bully doesn't go down, I'm getting the fuck out. I'm getting the fuck out. I'm not here to fucking wait for the bully to punch back, right? Because you know what, guys? My, ph my philosophy on trading is this. I can always get back in. If I'm wrong, I'm on. But what am I going to be fucking losing on? A few thousand dollars? I can make that back like, like nothing. But I'm not here sitting for a big giant ass loss, holding, praying, fighting with other guys. And that's exactly what it did. It went from nine fifty to thirteen dollars. Imagine I held on ten thousand. And ten thousand, I would have located more guys. My, I'm like, holy shit, man! Should I locate more and add? So that would be in twenty thousand shares. Okay, you imagine if I was in twenty thousand shares, losing three dollars a share, shit like that. It fucking, dude, it fucking sucks. So I told myself. You know, I, this happens a lot when I was younger. I would wait and hope and pray, and it would keep going up. So I've gotten better. Okay, so the progression over the years is this, guys. Uh, when you're a new trader, you, you, your first instinct is to add to a loss. Add to a loss. That is the wrong fucking shit. That should not be your first instinct. Your first instinct should be flee. Get the fuck out. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. You walking down a dark alley, some motherfucker comes out, shoots you with a fucking gun. He misses you. What the fuck you do? You stay? Get the fuck out. You fucked up. I'd rather live to fight another day. So, that's what saved me on KBIO. You remember that famous ass short squeeze that people lost tens of millions of dollars on? KBIO. My first instinct after hours. Cover. I had 30,000 shares. And it went from like $2.50. I covered like 5 bucks, 8 bucks. I lost, dude, I lost like... 70, 80,000 on KBIO, okay? On a small position. This was like $2.50 stock. I had like 20,000 shares, something like that, right? It was very little back then, right? So these guys lost, they held, and the stock went from $2.50 to $22. After that, I had PTSD. I'm like, dude, I'm never going to let that shit happen again. You know, I got lucky. I stopped out at $7, $8. These other guys are holding it, adding, adding. Got wiped out. Fucking went to $22. What is the worst that you can do when you stop out? You take the loss, but it's a manageable loss. So what? I took some punches. I can come back. But dude, you take too, too many of those punches, you're going to blow up. So, but this is, this is the next level shit, okay? So, what I did was this. Because I took that loss, because I stopped out on $9.50, I am fucking free and clear of that stock. I do not have mental... Damage. I did not lose my mental um, financial. You know, you have your financial capital. You have also your mental capital. So that stock didn't beat me up. I was still like, I still had power, power, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I didn't lose money. All I lost was back my profits. But even if I took the loss, I'm clear headed. It's a small, manageable loss. As long as you keep only taking small, manageable losses, you will stay in the game and your mind will be okay. This was a small, manageable loss for me because I ate it right away. I didn't stick around, I had no ego. So what I did was this. When it fucked me, and I know it fucked a lot of people too, because if it fucked me, it, it fucked mo more people than it fucked me. All right, because I'm a better trader, in my not gonna win, right? But that's, that's in my head, right? So what I do, I joined. I went long, I switched long. I made back my fucking losses. Take a look at the chart. So, stopping out, guys. Taking small, manageable losses. I do that, you should learn to do that all day long. When you're wrong, you're wrong. Why keep fighting? I would switch over the long, and you saw the charts, guys. By switching over the long, it does a couple things. It's not even about the making the money. Switching over to the long side changes your bias in your head. 
I am no lock, no longer looking to top tick shorts. That's how you blow up. If you get out, but you're always looking to fight the trend. This sucker's going up. What's MIRN right, right now, guys? What is MIRN? What's the quote? Ugh, when I left, it was 11.50. Then I shot up to 13 bucks. What's it right now? The moment I switched over the long, it saved me because I am no longer short bias in my head. I am not looking to top tick the short anymore. You know what would happen if I top tick the short? I would short. I would try to short eleven dollars, ten dollars and ninety nine cents. Oops, wrong. It shot up to another dollar. I would always be trying to top tick. Always be getting stuck, and that's how they trap you. You go from nine dollars and fifty cents to thirteen bucks to nine fifty. So Alex did good, topped me out at ten bucks. If Alex had added ten dollars, he'd be fucking hurting. So that's that's how they trap you guys. So when you switch over, that you change the bias in your head. You are no longer fighting the trend. It feels so much better, guys. I'm sitting there waiting to go long, and I went long at nine dollars and wait, actually ten dollars and fifty cents. I actually had a, I actually had a long at ten dollars that I got out, looking to join the trend, looking to go long, looking to hurt the shorts, because I used to be a short on that stock and I was hurt. Okay, guys. So that's the key, man. When you on the right side, when you change your bias in your head, so stop thinking short, 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 or long, 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 long. There is a point where in the morning, MIRN was a short. It was broken. All the signs were short. We made money on that. But when we did not put in a hard stop, we got fucked. That's fine, okay? You make a mistake, it's okay. We make mistakes all day long. Do not add to the mistake, guys. Do not add to the mistake. So, I, didn't, I took the fucking loss like a fucking man. Then I fucking switched too long. And oh my God, dude. So that's been my mentality lately. Uh, the guys in the room know I've been longing a lot of these stocks. Even yesterday, remember when Alex told me, uh, we're going to find that quote, but uh, yesterday in uh, main chat or after hours, one of those, um, Alex says, MRN, oh my God, it's going to spark up a ton of small caps. I told the room, I will now start looking to go long more because that's the environment that we are in. The moment that I am flexible, is when I can eat the loss and switch over bias. I'm not recommending you switch over bias because you can, you can lose both sides. It could been a bit, it could have been the top. The reason I switched over bias because MRN is a trappy head of the snake, and I'm looking around. I see other stocks all over the fucking place. It's strong, man. This is a strong long bias market. Short seller right now is getting killed. So, I am being very open. I'm not overly biased, you know. So what, we, so, what I'm doing now, this is my training plan for MRN, guys. I am not going to short that stock. I am going to short the sympathies. So, whenever sympathy breaks up, I will short that. And that's how you make money. So, because of sympathies, when you're wrong, you don't hurt as much. Because these sympathies do not go up as much because they have no merit. The only reason these sympathies up is because of the head of the snake. The moment the head of the snake tanks, the sympathies fall apart quicker with less fucking resistance of fighting, less shorts being stuck. The problem with MRN right now is so many shorts are stuck. They have to what's called unravel the shorts. In order for a stock to go down, you have to get all the shorts out because then there'll be no bids. Remember, I keep telling you, if you watch my segment on Instagram Live every week, I keep talking about Short sellers, this is a secret, guys. Short sellers is, are the natural bidders of a stock. You will never get a sustained squeeze. That's the key. The word is sustained squeeze, unless you have short sellers. Because a sustained squeeze needs to have buyers, bidders, buyers, and those are the shorts. Longs are not the natural buyers. They, are, they bought already. They're waiting to sell. Longs are actually the natural sellers of a stock. And that's why you see, we always check the locates. We always warn about the easy to borrow locates. 
when we see not many shorts are available i know that the stock cannot sustain the squeeze because at some point when it reaches stupidity there will be no more stupid people to buy they're just selling this is how amc gme all those go to crazy levels you have to have this the buyers buying at stupid nosebleed levels that do not make sense who is buying at the nosebleed levels the shorts not the longs the shorts guys so when i see the cheap ass locates on mrn which is actually not cheap today it was like three cents you know um that's the reason why i went max size to ten thousand shares guys that's why i had a little more confidence because i saw the price of mrn go up so i didn't think yesterday it was like easy to borrow or some shit so that's what that's where it lured everybody in guys it lured everybody in but the volume was so much that you know someone probably locked up the flow by buying most of it so you know mrn was a very tricky stock guys if you survive that stock congratulations as a short you know uh what's gonna happen now is mrn is going to kill the, the long-sided traders that that just heard about it they're gonna go home tonight uh they're gonna go Oh, I heard this thing from my coworker. They're gonna fucking put a buy order tomorrow. It'll gap up and it'll go down. Something like that. I'm just making it up. But you know, this is the three day rule. Well, that's the classic three day rule. When you, um, <clears throat> when everybody hears about the hype. I had a friend yesterday buy a Dogecoin at 25 cents. I'm like, what the fuck are you buying for? I just posted the fact that Dogecoin is going to zero because of dilution, right? And he goes, oh, I it's only 500 bucks. You know, it's play money. I'm just, I'm like, bro, that's the hype already happened. But you see how there's multiple waves of hype. The first hype is the most powerful hype. That is the one that's most predictable. The first hype, when you fucking get that first hype, you need to be selling. Because that's the biggest fucking thing. It's very rare a stock like AMC would do this. Okay? People, AMC has started a generation of, I wouldn't even say traders, of gamblers. I think that they can fucking hold shit and it will go up forever. I mean, if it's that easy, guys, everybody will be rich. And you know what, man? Education right now, guys, is the key. You guys are all being educated right now, man. I'm telling you, man. Keep learning right now. This is going to be a ridiculously good market for us educated people. We will know when to sell, when to buy, when to short. And if you are well-rounded overall, that's why I keep trying to tell everybody. Being in a room like MIC... I may, Alex and I may short most of the time, but knowing how a short seller's mentality is will make a long bias trader very profitable. If you're surrounded a bunch of hype men telling you Dogecoin is going to the moon, going to $1,000, that doesn't fucking help you. But when you hear the other side trying to take a short at 50 cents, 70 cents, whatever it may be, you start to think, maybe I should take some off right there. So we work in unison, everybody works together, okay? And you, if you take a look at the room, man, I'm, just, I'm screaming all morning, do not short, do not short, do not short. I even go along, okay? When you hear a short seller like myself go along and stock, you better not be shorting that shit. You know what I'm saying? You better not be fucking shorting that shit. So being in a room like us, it's actually fucking helpful, man. You know which ones, you know, if you're long, you know, and you can convince me to go long, you got, you got something there. <laughs> So I've been going long a lot more often because that's the type of market we're in, man. So, so I'm gonna sum it up right now, guys. How do you profit from this? You profit, number one, by not losing as much. You know when to get out. You know right now, just eat the loss. Eat the loss when it's manageable. You can always get back in, guys. Do not worry about it, eat the loss. Do not add to your loser. Do not think this shit go down. Know the stock you're trading. MRN is a fucking son of a bitch. Yesterday, it killed a lot of people. What's the difference today? Do you think it could die that easy? We were fooled. How many of these happen all the time where it looks like it's dead and it goes back up? This is how AMC, this is how all these things are. They're just waiting, waiting, waiting because they already made their money. They're just going to buy all this shit back. They locked the stock already, man. The flow, float, they can buy the whole shit back. So that's what the thing you guys got to learn, man. So many, many different experience levels. I suggest you eat the fucking shit. If you don't eat, you don't need to eat at all. Eat at least half. Eat half. You fucked up already. Don't fucking keep holding because I always know this, guys. When I want out, 
It's when everybody other sheep wants out and we are fighting one another. And I can't even put a fucking bid out because they are overstepping me on the ask. Everyone is buying 20 cents over the ask. I cannot even feel on the fucking ask. But when that shit moose shots up, you have one chance to get out. It will dip a little bit because it's irrational way up, right? It will dip. It will dip. And that is your chance to get the fuck out if you're short. So you guys learn how the fuck I stop out right now, okay? I I stop out by getting out on the fucking first dip. That's the only way that you can buy shit on the bid. After that, it's game the fuck over. Because what happens is this. You, you, you have a combination of guys fighting to fucking cover. And you have longs that go, oh shit, I'm going to fucking buy this shit. Chasers, right? Whew. Any questions, guys? I'm going to stop there. I said a mouthful right there. Any, any questions? And follow the process, guys. You know, I'm going to tell you something. This is what saved me on um, MRN as well. I have a process. The process includes canceling all open orders before 10.30 a.m. Because 10.30 is a zombie roll. So I've made it a habit. I looked over. I saw 10.15. I'm like, holy shit. Almost zombie. And this MRN zombie 15 minutes before the zombie. And I'm like, holy shit. Imagine what's going to happen at zombie hour. So what I did was I covered and I canceled all open orders. I had open orders for MRN all the way up, man. It just didn't fill. Because when I covered, I, I put it back on. I'm like, what am I doing? So I, did, I lost track of time when I covered my... So this is what happened. When I covered MRN at $9.50, my immediate, immediate reaction was to put it at $10 short. Because <laughs> it's a whole number, right? And I'm like, so I look at the time. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing, Val? It's almost zombie town. So I canceled all my open orders. And surely enough... It zombied up another fucking two, three points. So, part of your process should be to do what I call house cleaning. No one talks about this. Everyone will soon, man. House cleaning. House cleaning includes canceling open orders. Do not leave stragglers. I, how many times have I lost a lot of money on an open order I didn't even know I had an open order on? It happens all the time. So you better fucking cancel out. That happened so many times to me. Because you're trading and you have, you're trading like five positions. You have 20 orders open, you know. So all I did was, uh, there's two times I canceled my open orders. Uh, before zombie hours and before 3 p.m. So we have a 3 p.m. rule as well. So, so if you join, you'll learn all these rules, okay. So house cleaning is very, very important. You do never want the stock to come back and fill you in a direction you do not want. And one last thing, guys. If you guys... Fuck up, really. Call. This is how you save yourself. Call up your broker. Set the max daily loss. Max daily loss. Auto liquidation. Max daily loss. Auto liquidation. You can do it on the, an account level. Or you can do it on a stock ticker by ticker level. My advice to you is do it on a ticker by ticker level. On a smaller size. So if your max daily loss is $1,000. Maybe set $300 per ticker. So you have two levels of protection. Stopping yourself out on a per ticker and then stopping you out on the max account. Those that do not fucking set those will eventually blow up if you don't have fucking proper discipline, guys. And I hear people calling their brokers to get rid of these max daily loss. And I don't, I don't, I can't even fucking help you, man. I can't fucking help you there. <laughs> you know, that's on you. But for those that are not knowledgeable about these broker level stop losses, Stop out per ticker level. Max daily loss per ticker level. That's my advice to you. Per ticker as well as per account. So over. So there's two ways to stop yourself before you guys fuck up. So if you had a max daily loss per ticker on MIRN, which should be a fraction of your max daily loss, you would have been protected. They would have automatically triggered. And this is how a lot of these automatic programming uh, systematic algos are done they get triggered and so a lot of these sweeps swipes could be them fucking brokers saying these uh max daily loss stop outs for you guys so so do that guys you would save a lot of money on you do a stop out oh, any questions i'm gonna take some questions and we'll get back to work tomorrow tomorrow we have a free seminar by tosh every wednesday 
2 p.m. market time on YouTube. So watch for Tosh's uh, Twitter every 2 p.m. on Wednesday, guys. We talk all about this, guys. We, there's nobody walking around like we are right now. Alex did a, a YouTube live yesterday. I'm doing one today. Uh, Tosh does one tomorrow. Uh, tonight is a large cap webinar by Joe Kelly. Thursday, Aloha Trader does strategy tra um, strategies um, at 7 p.m. So we have webinars every single day, guys. I use fancy words for everything, guys. Why just limit myself to fucking longs or shorts? I have a dude, yeah, 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 fancy lives too. <laughs> yeah. All right, so any questions, guys? Max Sheriff's position on a five take. Share is meaningless. It's because I don't know what the prices that you're trading. Are you trading a hundred dollar stock? Are you trading a five cent stock? You know. We have videos on how to properly take a stop loss in MIC. It's too long to go over talking about. You 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 do not just blindly stop out above or under VWAP, guys. That 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 is the sheep. Do not stop out the sheep level. Where you stop out, usually where I enter the short. <laughs> what you want to do is to have have small enough size where you can wait for it to fluctuate around these lines, these support lines, these resistance lines, the VWAP. Because those are the areas they trick people. So I usually do not like to stop out those levels unless it's with authority. When you see fucking pang, you got to get out. Yep, I set all my fancy orders pre-market, man. Not all of them. I set I set my entries, my starters, and then I then when it fills, I look, and then I start to add or subtract or cover, depending on if I like the stock. But you guys right now uh, should be trading only like no more than a couple of stocks. Um, you shouldn't be fucking placing too many fancy orders because you guys are not experienced enough to handle all those. We have, yeah, we have videos on everything, man. I, I don't know what else to tell you guys. You guys, I, if you lost more than 200 bucks today, I don't know what the fuck you guys are doing, dude. Just fucking join and learn this shit. I'm not joking, man. You guys, I see some, some, I see some guys on Twitter. I was like, man, I don't want to talk about this guy, but fucking idiot loses like 400 bucks a day. Refuses to join MIC. Blew up every single account he has. The ego is what's killing all you guys that do not join. There are some people that legitimately cannot afford it. But if you are living in America, you can, fuck, you can afford it. Take a look at what the fucking t-shirt you wear. My t-shirt cost me 10 bucks. How much your t-shirt cost you? The most expensive thing is these shoes, which cost me like $70 on sale. Who was my mentor? Does that fucking matter? You gonna go fucking talk to my mentor or what? Come on, guys. Ask some good ass questions, man. You guys are asking some dumb ass shit. No offense to you guys. I had done interviews. If you wanna know who my mentor, all this stuff, I've done interviews with uh, with James and Harry in our MIC podcast. So, so guys, check out the podcast. I was on the podcast. I talk about my trades. I talk about my. My upbringing, I talk about how I got started. So uh, there's videos of me doing podcasts explaining all this, my history. <laughs> Zella, what's your perspective? Fuck, how the fuck I know? I'm walking around, bro. I can't even see the chart. Bro, guys, I'm telling you right now, man, the, the system that we teach, you guys can know all the answers to every stock. We don't give stock picks. We teach you how to analyze every single stock. We teach you the, stat, uh, the, the, the patterns, the setups, the strategies, the process, all this. $200, I could, man, I could train anybody to make 200 bucks a day. I'm not joking. If you follow our system and your discipline, man, I'm telling you, man, the only thing, you ask every single person in MIC right now. They're, 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 there's, like, oh, there's people right now online at IG. Guys, if you follow the MIC process, do you not make money? When you lose, it's because you fucked up, right, guys? You got greedy. Human nature. It's because of you, not because of our process, not because of our strategies. See, look at MRN, 1327. What did I tell you?
you guys were anybody's asking questions on MRN how to trade them should not be fucking trading MRN. I talk about this all the time, guys. Why are you guys trading the hardest stock that even the professionals are losing? What the fuck? What's the point? Trade the easier shit. Look what I'm doing, dude. I'm trading the easier shit. I teach people to trade the easier stuff. Close MRN. Who gives a fuck? If you're losing that shit and you're a beginner, that stock is not going to make you money. You missed a boat. That sucker was like $2 last week or some shit. You're asking like, I, I hate answering questions. I, I had a guy PM me this morning. What do you think MRN? I'm like, bro, if you're asking me on the harder stock, I don't know what to tell you, man. <laughs> Yep, exactly, David. There's reason why MIC members' charts look similar. We teach repeatable, scalable process that you make money off. MIC says to put a hard stop. Those I lost on MRN did not put a hard stop. You know, we, we, we teach you part of the process. We're the only ones that teach you proper risk management, guys. You don't hear many of the MIC guys blowing up knock on wood. You don't see us revenge trading knock on wood. You see other guys fucking do it in other rooms because they don't get, they don't get taught proper risk management. So we teach you guys all this stuff, guys. You can either try to lose all your money learning on your own or join. All right, guys, I'm tired. I'm gonna get back. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Don't fucking don't. The reason you should look at MRN is as a gauge of the head of the snake for other plays. If MRN goes down, the other plays are going to go down even more. Good luck, guys. I'll see you.